All right. Uh, hi, morning, everyone. Uh, so let's go to our revision class for today. Yeah? So today we are going to look at uh, gravitation. And I thought that I wanted to start off by uh, doing a short review, okay, uh, before we actually answer the questions. Now. So uh, yes, we're going to answer these module questions, okay, uh, which are in... I don't remember what page it is. <laughs> um, yeah, this page. Okay, page 17. Lah. But I thought that we would do a short review first. Okay, uh, just to remind us about what are the important things to remember when you talk about gravitation. Now, generally, uh, a lot of people find this chapter challenging because there are so many formulas. Uh, and the formulas are very, very similar to one another. Okay, uh, so I think a good way to approach this chapter is to is to look at each formula and to understand what they want. Okay, uh, is to understand what the formula is for. Lah. Okay, and um, I cannot stress this enough. Huh? I find that the best way to really understand how a formula works huh, is to memorize the formula. Lah. Okay, of course nowadays, Everybody is always so dependent on the formula list. Uh, because, you know, in your exam paper, right, uh, behind the cover page, uh, the second page, the formula list is there. Uh, okay, but I find that the formula list is, is uh, just a crutch. Okay, where else you should be, you should be memorizing the formula. Because when you memorize the formula, uh, okay, like it or not, when you memorize the formula, you, it actually helps you to know what the formula is for. Okay, most people that depend on the formula list uh, will just be like, okay, I'm going to memorize the formula, I just look at the formula. But the formula is just a list of letters, you know, it doesn't tell you what each symbol is. Okay, and that's a very pretty sad thing uh, because, you know, something that is supposed to help you uh, actually makes you even more lazy to help yourself. Okay, so I would actually suggest that you memorize the formula. Okay, uh, or at least take some time uh, to sit down and understand what the formula is about. Lah. Okay, otherwise, you just be a bunch of letters uh, and that totally doesn't make any sense to you. Okay, all right, so there are several formulas that we need to think about. Okay, and I want to go through each and every one uh, to see what the small differences are. Lah. Okay, so the first formula is the formula for gravitational force. Okay, which is given by F equals to G M1 M2 over R squared. Okay, the important thing, okay, the important thing about this gravitational force uh, is this R over here. Okay, actually in all the formulas, okay, in all the formulas, uh, R is always calculated, uh, the distance from the center of something to the center of another thing. Okay, so for example, the distance between these two planets from Earth and the Moon, uh, the R is counted from the center of the Earth, oh no, center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. Okay, so so it is not, uh, it is not, and we always think it's like this, right? It is not the distance from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the Moon. Uh, this is wrong. It's from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. Okay? And the center of the Earth, there is a component where you have to pertimbangkan the radius of the Earth and as well as the radius of the Moon. Okay, and this will come in more useful at uh, other, uh, other formulas. Lah. But I want you to know this, lah, that in all the formulas uh, in gravitation, the R is always calculated lah, from the center of one object to the center of another object. Now, the bigger your object is, uh, the you know the more important the center becomes. Uh. If it is just between me and another person, uh, my center and his center, uh, or her center, okay, because our bodies are so small, uh, the center doesn't really matter. Uh. Okay, so the distance from my center to her, his or her center, or the distance from my skin to his or her skin, it's about the same. Uh. Okay, but the radius makes a difference uh, when the object is very big. Okay, like the size of the earth, the size of the moon, the size of the sun. Okay, when the object is very big, uh, okay, then the center is very important. Okay, so 
first thing you need to know in this formula is that the letter G okay, represents the universe, universal gravitational constant. A6 by 6, 7 times 10 to the power negative 11. No need to um, memorize the number, okay, but you just need to know that this G, the big G, uh, is a gravitational constant which is different from the small g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. The small g is a gravi uh, sorry, gravitational acceleration. Okay, so it's two totally different things now. One is big letter G, one is small letter G. Okay, why do they use big letter G and small letter G? Don't ask questions like that. Lah. Okay, it's a ridiculous question to ask. Don't ask. Okay, it's already decided, so we should accept it as it is. Okay, so this formula tells us two very important relationships. Okay, it tells us that the gravitational force F is always proportional, uh, directly proportional to the mass. Okay, if your mass is bigger, the bigger your mass, uh, the bigger the gravitational force will be. Okay, and it is inversely proportional to the distance. The further you are away from something, uh, the less there is a gravitational force between the two of you. Okay, so this is the other thing that you need to understand. This gravitational force uh, is a force that is in between these two objects. Okay, that means uh, the Earth is pulling the Moon and the Moon is also pulling the Earth. Okay, both of them are pulling towards one another. Of course, of course, the Earth has a bigger pull. Okay, the Earth has a bigger pull because it's, you know, its gravity is much bigger, like its size is much bigger. Okay, of course, Earth has a much bigger pull because, you know, the opinion size is a little bit bizarre. Okay, and uh, obviously, it has more gravitational force pull. Uh, okay, and I think I mentioned this in one class before. And I always have to do the comparison between me and Joey, la, one of the smallest persons in our class. If I, if there was a force between me and Joey, uh, I would have the bigger force. Saya yang lebih menarik Joey. But it doesn't mean that Joey is not pulling me. Okay, the moon is still pulling the earth. Okay, the moon is still pulling the earth okay, towards, uh, towards the moon, but with a smaller force because the size is so much smaller. Okay, and that's why, and that's why uh, the smaller object uh, is the one that always orbits. Okay, the smaller object is the one that always orbits around the bigger object, just like the moon orbits around the the earth and the earth orbits around the sun because the sun is so much bigger than the earth okay the word orbit nah, okay is berjalan dalam satu orbit lah okay moving in an orbit orbit is not just a noun it is also a verb lah okay dia adalah satu kata kerja juga dia sedang mengorbit okay so we need to get used to these words all right uh then of course this uh calculation example example Okay, um, from this formula, actually this should be the second formula. Sorry, this is the second formula. <clears throat> okay, from this formula, okay, when we combine both uh, Newton's second law and the universal law, we will be able to calculate the gravitational acceleration for a certain uh, planet, okay, which is given by the value of G, Okay, which is the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11, multiplied by the mass of the planet. Depends on the planet, like which planet you want. If you calculate, if you use the mass of the Earth, then it's the Earth's uh, gravitational acceleration. If you use the Moon's M, the Moon's mass, uh, then it will be the Moon's gravitational acceleration. Okay? Uh, but this is the important thing. The R squared, uh, is again the distance between the two centers. Okay, so the bigger your R is, uh, okay, the smaller your gravitational acceleration. Okay, and of course, the bigger your M, you will have a bigger gravitational acceleration. Okay, and so this one is very important, especially when you want to calculate uh, the gravitational acceleration acting on an object at a certain distance. And this is why I say uh, it is from the center of the Earth until the center of the object. OK, 
Okay. Of course, in this case of the ball, okay, the case of this block sample over here, okay, the H, okay, the height nah, is called is uh, we assume lah, that the height is from the surface of the earth all the way until the center of the ball. That's the height. Okay, but we have to take into consideration uh, the radius of the earth. Okay, when we calculate the small r. Okay, so on the earth surface, the gravitational acceleration is just gm over r squared and r is just the radius of the earth. And this is about 9.81 meters per second squared. Lah. Okay, the higher you go, the further you are away from the earth, Okay, the, the gravitation will be much smaller. Okay, so, then, yes. Uh, oh, wait, after this off. Sorry? Uh, I wanted to ask a question. Oh, can ask. Uh, if a meteor yeah. uh, lands on Earth, is it because the collision forces in space or is it because of the gravitational pull of earth both actually <laughs> uh, it needs to be able to come close enough to the earth in order for it to crash on the earth lah. but it also has to there is also uh... <laughs> sorry uh, okay first of all the meteor is already moving with a certain velocity and it is already moving with a certain velocity uh, and since it is let's say it's, let's say it's, you are you're saying that it's crashing towards the earth lah. so let's say if it's crashing towards the earth that means it is moving with a certain velocity towards the earth by some outside force lah. maybe it maybe the melanton lah, from another object in space lah. and somehow its trajectory or its or its direction is moving towards the earth lah. Okay, so at a certain point, uh, at a certain distance, uh, okay, at a certain distance uh, from the Earth, uh, the Earth will have begin to have its pull on the meteor. And when the Earth has its pull towards the meteor, it will obviously increase the velocity of the meteor uh, because it's going to pull it with a certain gravitational acceleration. And of course, as it comes nearer and nearer to the Earth, the gravitational the acceleration will get much, much more bigger and it will get much much more faster lah. but it's a combination of a few factors lah. it's not just one factor lah. it's not just the gravitational pull of the earth lah, that causes the meteor to crash into it lah. a couple of factors in play first the meteor must come close enough to the earth in order for the gravity of the earth to be able to pull the meteor in so it must come close enough and it must have a certain velocity lah, in order for it to uh, to enter, sorry, to to be pulled uh, by the earth. Uh, uh, and I will touch on this later also. It needs, uh, it needs to have a... Sorry, Awena. Um, okay, first of all, it needs to enter the earth's orbit. <clears throat> okay, it needs to enter the earth's orbit at a certain, at a, what we call a, like a minimum velocity. Lah. Uh, if it's too slow, then it's not going to it's not going to come into Earth's orbit. Okay, it needs to come into the orbit uh, at a certain velocity in order for it uh, to be able to be pulled by uh, Earth's gravitation. So, if you say it's just one factor per se, it's not one factor la. I think it's a couple of factors uh, that is involved uh, <laughs> in a, in a meteor or a comet uh, crashing into the Earth. La. Part of which is you know the velocity of the meteor itself. Okay, combined with the gravitational pull uh, of the Earth. That's what I think. Okay? Okay, thank you. Right. Thanks, good question. <clears throat> okay, uh, sorry, uh, let me go on. So that's the second formula. Third formula is this centripetal force. Okay, now centripetal force okay, is the force uh, that is acting on the object Okay, that is orbiting. Okay, that is orbiting. Uh, but the only different thing here is that this mass, uh, okay, color previously, bakan, G equals to, um, what is it? Uh? Okay, GM over R, bakan, R squared, uh, R squared, yeah. 
Okay, so this m, the gravitational, the gravitational acceleration is calculated by using the mass of the object that is pulling. But centripetal force uh, is calculated by using the mass of the object that is being pulled. It's a very big difference. Okay, the centripetal force is the force on the object that is being pulled. Yang di tarik. Okay, and it's one of the very few formulas uh, where we use another object punya mass to count the uh, to count the centripetal force. Okay, so the centripetal force is a force on the object that is being pulled. Okay, that's why you see the mass of the orbiting body. Yeah? Orbiting body can be the moon, can be the satellite around us, can be the earth if it's orbiting around the sun. Okay, the, but the most important thing is this. Lah. For this particular formula, we need to take note that the mass uh, is the mass of the thing that is orbiting. Okay, not the thing in the center. Most of the time, okay, most of the time, like with just now, with this gravitational acceleration, okay, we are only considering the mass of the thing that is pulling. Okay, but in centripetal force, we are considering the mass of the thing that is being pulled. Okay, yang ditarik. Okay, itu dia punya uh, jisim yang patut dikira. Bukan yang menarik. Uh, yang menarik is the first two uh, formulas. Okay, not this one. Okay, and so... Uh, same thing lah, okay, the R, okay, the R is always the same, huh? the distance from the center of the earth until the center of the satellite, okay, or the center of the moon, depending on what is orbiting lah, okay, uh, yes, this relationship, okay, now, from there, okay, from there, since F equals to mv squared over R, and from Newton's second law, we know that F equals to ma, okay, so I can, Sim I can su summarize uh, that actually A is equals to V squared over R. And this is what we call a centripetal acceleration. Different from gravitational acceleration. Uh, okay, gravitational acceleration is the acceleration that is pulling something towards the earth or something towards the object. Uh. But centripetal acceleration is the acceleration of an object in a circular motion. It means this satellite, uh, when it's moving, uh, it is moving with a certain acceleration. Uh. Okay, and we call it a centripetal acceleration. Okay, so the V squared over R uh, plays a very big difference. So I call this 3A because actually it comes from the third formula, which is this. Okay, it's just a you know an offshoot of that lah. Okay, and the calculation for centripetal acceleration. Okay, the fourth formula is the mass of the body at the center of an orbit. So it depends on what is the thing that is the center lah. If the Earth is the center, then you're talking about the Earth's mass. If you're talking about the Sun, then you're talking about the Sun's mass. Okay, now we can calculate the mass of a body as long as we know. Okay, two very important things. Number one, the period of revolution. And number two, the radius of the orbit. Okay, period of revolution is the time taken to make one full circle. So for example, uh, if you're talking about the Earth around the Sun, uh, one period is about 365.25 days. Eight days, ka? yeah, days. <laughs> Okay, if it is the moon around the earth, one period is about 30 days. Can the moon goes around the earth? Yeah, lah, correct, 30 days. <laughs> okay, time taken to circle the orbit. Lah. Okay, make one full circle. So the moon is about 30 days, the earth around the sun is about 365.25 days. But everything, okay, everything uh, in this T, we change to seconds. Okay, when we calculate everything, we change it into seconds lah, because of the value of g. Okay, now notice uh, that this one, this one over here, follows Kepler's third law. Okay, Kepler's third law. The, peer, the square of the period is directly proportional to the cube of the radius. Okay, we will come to that in a little while. Lah. Okay. So you can calculate virtually any mass lah, of the body at the center of an orbit. Okay, Kepler's third law. First law is the law of ellipse. Okay, it tells us that 
the orbit, uh, okay, the orbit actually isn't a circle. <laughs> okay, we always think it's a circle, but actually it's an ellipse. An ellipse is like a flattened circle. Uh, okay, and uh, there are many, that's not to say many, uh, there are a couple of explanations why, uh, okay, uh, why uh, we need to understand uh, gravity uh, in a different sense. Uh, okay, but this is not the place to discuss it. Uh, okay, we just need to know that the orbit uh, okay, of, uh, of a planet, especially Earth's orbit, uh, okay, uh, sorry, every planet around the sun, okay, when they orbit, actually it is an ellipse, it's an ellipse. Okay? And the sun is at one of the focus, there is actually another focus point. If we did the ellipse punya, the, the simulation, uh, you will know that you need two focus points. Okay, and because you know both of them uh sorry connect to this one, right? So as it moves along, uh, okay, it's gonna move faster at certain places and slower at other places. Uh. Okay, so that's first law of Kepler. Second law of Kepler is called the law of areas. So a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas at equal times. Okay, most important thing is travel from A to B, the time is the same. Okay, number two, this area and this area is the same. Okay, at first glance, uh, it looks like this is bigger, right? Okay, but actually it is not. Because it is not, the sun is not really in the center. It is an ellipse. Okay, remember ellipse got two focus points. Okay, we only consider the sun. Lah. What is the other focus point of the ellipse? Let's not talk about that. But we know that ellipse, lah, the sun is one of the focus points. Okay, and so because of that, it sweeps out equal areas at equal times. The distance, however, is different. That is true. Okay, the distance is different. We find that the distance of AB is bigger than the distance of CD. That's true, okay. Because uh, you know the the length here and the length here very obvious like You can see lah, okay. Even though the radius is different, and so because of that, the linear speed, nah, okay. The linear speed here it will move faster because it has to move the same amount of time, and it has to move the same amount of time but with a longer distance. Let's say uh, you have 10 seconds uh, to move 100 meters and 10 seconds uh, to move 1 meter. <laughs> okay, which one will you move faster? Of course, the 10 seconds, you know, in 100 meters. <laughs> okay, now I'm thinking about Squid Game. Now. <laughs> wow. Let's say, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, okay, you must finish 100 meters in 10 seconds. Okay, and then the other person, you, you only need to finish 1 meter in 10 seconds. Obviously, the person in 100 meters, uh, in order for him not to be killed, <laughs> okay, he has to move faster in 100 meters because he has a longer distance to cover, okay, in the same amount of time, in a short amount of time. Okay, so the time here is the same. Okay, the distance is different. That's why the linear speed is different. Okay, objects that are nearer to the sun, okay, when it is orbiting nearer to the sun, they move faster. Okay, and then as it goes away and further away from the sun, it moves slower and slower. Lah. Okay, and there are explanations to this as well lah, because, uh, you know, when you are nearer to the sun, okay, the gravitational pull, or oh, sorry, the centripetal force lah, is much bigger. Okay, so you, you know, you move much faster. On the color ini, the force is a lot lesser. Okay, so you move a lot slower. All right. Third law is the law of periods. Okay. And which is what I said just now, the square of the period is directly proportional to the cube of the radius. And this brings us to formula number five. Okay. T1 squared over T2 squared equals to R1 cubed over R2 cubed. One of the most common mistakes that I see when students do is they always write T1 squared over T2 squared equals to R1 squared over R2 squared. Everything is squared. Or everything is cube. <laughs> okay, this is a very common mistake I see uh, even in four or five students nowadays. Lah. Okay, they still make this mistake. Remember, the period is squared and the, the radius is cube. Okay, 
But the hold on, huh? Just give me one minute. Okay, sorry. So the important thing is this, lah. The bigger your radius, ah, the longer your period will be. This is very logical. Can if you are further away from the sun, obviously you're going to take a longer time to orbit. Can rather than if you're nearer to the sun. Okay, that's very normal, lah. On Earth, the Earth orbits around the sun takes about three hundred sixty-five. Point two five days, okay. Uh, for what is the first planet for Venus lah? Okay, Venus is much nearer to the sun. It's gonna take less than one year, okay, for Venus to orbit around the Earth. Jupiter is way far behind, okay. Jupiter is gonna take a very long time to orbit around the sun, okay, because of the radius is very far, okay. All right. Uh, then Kepler's law has all this. Okay, then we come to formula number six. Which is the linear speed? Okay, the linear speed is for the object that is orbiting around the Earth. Okay, so linear speed is object that is orbiting around the Earth, and I think for your syllabus, we are only concentrating on things that are orbiting around the Earth, lah. For example, satellites, our Moon. We're not so interested in the Earth orbiting around the Sun anymore, lah. Okay, so we can calculate the linear speed of anything. As long as we know the mass of the center, okay, and the distance again, okay, the distance is from the center of the Earth. So this is the total R, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, <laughs> the one thing that if you cannot remember anything today, remember this: the R in all the formulas, okay, in chapter three, uh, is always calculated from the center of the Earth. So you have to know. The radius of the Earth, which is given to you, don't need to worry. The mass of the Earth is given. The radius of the Earth is given. Okay, the formulas are easy because the numbers are given. Okay, what makes the formulas difficult is if you don't know what the formula is for. Okay, that's why I highly recommend, <laughs> I highly recommend memorizing the formulas. Okay, or at least taking some time to understand the formulas. Go through each formula and see what's the difference. List them down so you know. Oh, this formula is for what? This formula is for what? Okay, that's linear speed. Now, from linear speed, we can calculate the escape velocity. But now, this is the difference. Huh? one is square root of g m over r. Okay, and the other one is the escape velocity. Yeah, it it needs to achieve a certain velocity. Okay, in order to be able to overcome the gravitational force and escape to outer space. Okay, right now it is traveling at gm over r square root. Okay, and it's well, you know, it's traveling at different different uh, velocities like because it's changing direction all the time, kan? Okay, but if it goes faster, there's a centripetal acceleration. We talked about this earlier. Okay, as it accelerates, ah, uh, if you if it is not controlled, lah, if let's say kita kasi biar saja kan, it's gonna accelerate, and accelerate, and sooner or later it's gonna achieve a certain escape velocity. Okay, and the difference between this, ah, uh, is just a square root of two only. This is the linear velocity, at least the linear speed. This is the escape velocity. It is only a factor of square root two, which is one point. One point one four, you know, one point four one four one four one four one lah, about lah. Okay, so it just needs to uh achieve a one point four one four one times, uh, of its of its speed at a certain point. Okay, in order for it to escape the. Sure. Yes. Uh, I have a uh, another question. It's ah, yes. quite 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 random lah, yeah. but is the. Uh, does the sun have an axis? Like, is it like a constantly spinning, or is it just like still? I would say that the sun is constantly spinning. Why wouldn't it spin? It's you know if okay. If the Earth is spinning, okay, there's a reason why it's spinning lah. Okay, it obviously has an axis and it's obviously spinning because of its own gravitational pull and also the sun's gravitational pull. Okay, and I would think that. I would think lah, okay, and this is only my thought. I, I think if I were to answer your question, I would probably need to do a little bit more research. But I think that uh, the sun will probably also be spinning. Otherwise, if it's not spinning, how is it going to generate that? Uh, how is it going to generate that 
force field. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not ready to go into that. Yeah, how is it going to generate that? You know, that magnetic field. Uh, okay, uh, that, that, um, that, yeah, that causes uh, the sun flares and the sunspots and everything. I would say that it has to spin as well. But what causes it to spin is a good question. Now, I, I actually don't really know the answer to that. But yeah, yeah, I would think it would be spinning. Why wouldn't? Why would it be standing still? If something is standing still, uh, it wouldn't be able to generate a magnetic field, which is very important because in order to generate, uh, uh, you know, a pull, uh, okay, on the sun, you need to be able to spin to generate the magnetic field, and that's why the sun's magnetic pull, the sun's gravitational pull, uh, is much much bigger because it's such a big mass. It's spinning. And when we talk about the spinning sun, uh, uh, this is a fact that I only very recently remembered. Uh. Actually, when we say that this earth is spinning and the sun is spinning, uh, you know, the, the putaran, uh, what causes day and night, everything. Uh, to us, uh, it feels like it's very slow. I was like, oh my gosh, it's 24 hours. <laughs> you know, it's spinning very slowly because we think that 24 hours is a very long time. But actually, uh, this earth is spinning quite fast, you know. <laughs> I can't remember what is the actual value of the spin. La. Okay, but the earth is actually spinning quite fast. Okay, it's just that we don't feel it because we think that 24 hours is a very short amount of time. But uh, when we look at it, la, when we look at how fast the earth is spinning, okay, and then la, we realize that actually uh, 24 hours uh, is nothing, you know. 24 hours uh, to, you know, to... If you if you believe in God, twenty four hours to God nah, is like nothing, you know. Okay, for us twenty four hours, like, oh my God, it's such a long time. Like now lah, you know, one hour is just like such a long time. So it's just rambling and rambling on about gravity. <laughs> okay, it takes such a long time, but the Earth is actually spinning very fast. Okay, uh, and the other cool thing which I also found out is that if either the Sun or the Earth, okay, and I I'm always very amazed by this lah. If we are just if we are just a little bit nearer to the sun or a little bit further from the sun uh, in our orbit lah, let's say kita punya orbit kan tiba tiba dia terlari lah, and if we move a little bit nearer to the sun or a little bit further away from the sun uh, that's it you know that's our death, <laughs> okay. And when when I'm saying a little bit nearer, I'm not saying like okay lah, micrometers nearer no lah, you know, but you know significantly nearer enough lah, you know, just a little bit of our orbit uh, and everything on our earth uh, will die you know, including us okay so it's pretty amazing that our earth uh, is so strategic strategically positioned uh, okay that it is able to cater uh, to you know all life on earth uh, which and it's able to provide us water blah 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 blah, blah because of its position uh with respect to the sun and likewise, uh, when the Earth is spinning, uh, it is spinning at just the just nice lah. Okay, it is spinning with just uh, you know ngam ngam cantik dia punya speed. Okay, together with the sun spinning. If the sun were to spin a little bit faster or a little bit slower, it would cause a lot of problems uh, to all the planets in its orbit. So I where did I read this? I read this somewhere lah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not on Facebook. I read this like you know on a proper proper science website. But I can't remember what is the value of the spin. But yes, yes, yes. I would think that the sun is spinning on a certain axis. Why would it not be spinning though? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll do a little bit of research. Like, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so escape velocity, and then of course this is probably this is the last page of this uh revision now, uh, but uh, we need to know about the two types of satellites that are orbiting around the Earth. Okay, uh, so they are called geostationary and non-geostationary. Geo because of its geographical uh, location, and stationary is whether it is the same location or moving location. So non-geostationary means it is not stationary at one position. It's the the position is changeable. Okay. So, for geostationary satellites, they only have a certain orbit. They are only at a certain height above the Earth. And it is called a geostationary Earth orbit. Okay? The rotation is the same as Earth's rotation. So, you know, it's moving together with the Earth. 
Okay, it cannot be like the earth is moving and then it's like catching up to the earth. No, it has to be moving together with the earth. And the reason for this uh, is because, okay, so let's say on the earth, uh, there is a, you know, there's a satellite dish, lah, okay, that, <laughs> that is receiving the signal. Doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, fine. And then this is the satellite. Okay, which looks like a fly, lah, whatever. Lah. Okay, so the satellite uh, is always communicating with this receiver. Okay, and as and because the earth is rotating, so that's the, the dish uh, is also going to rotate. Lah. So that's why the satellite has to be always on top, on top. Uh. The satellite always has to be on top of the dish, okay, in order for it to continually communicate. Okay, so that's why, in order for that to happen, the rotation of the satellite must be the same as the rotation of the Earth. Okay, the Earth pushing the orbit also, the orbit of the satellite also must follow the Earth's rotation. Okay, and the orbital period is 24 hours, one day around the sun, because it follows the Earth. Lah. Okay, if the Earth is orbiting, no, if the Earth is rotating at 24 hours, the orbit of the satellite also is 24 hours. Okay, and the main function of this is a communication satellite. Okay, for example, Miasat. Miasat is what causes our, if you still have la, okay, the reason why we have Astro is because of Miasat. Okay, so the position of the satellite is always there all the time, okay, above the, you know, above the satellite dish la, okay, so that it can always communicate. Okay, non-geostationary satellites, okay, they can be higher or lower than the geostationary Earth orbit. It doesn't have to, Sorry, the direction of rotation is not the same. Okay, it's not the same as the Earth's rotation. It can be changed. And then uh, the orbital period can be more or less than 24 hours. Okay, so it can be faster than the Earth's rotation. It can be slower than the Earth's rotation. It can be moving the same direction as the Earth's rotation. It can be moving in the opposite direction. Okay, because the function is different. It is for Earth imaging. Okay, let's say if you... I mean, if you have time la, and if you really want to, uh, you should go to this Google Earth. La. Google Earth is like one of the coolest things uh, that I, I think that we've ever done. La. Okay. Not Google Maps. La. Gosh, Google Maps is so not cool. La. But Google Earth is very cool. Okay, Google Earth is cool. You can see the different layers of Earth. And you can see Earth imaging. La. Okay, Earth imaging. It's a bit scary as well because like, oh my gosh, I can see my house from here. Can I see the people inside the house? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Okay, but Earth imaging, okay, requires the satellite to be at different places at different times. It can't just stay always above Malaysia. Okay, let's say if you want to see, oh, what's happening with my boyfriend in the United Kingdom? Okay, fine. Let's no. <laughs> so with GPS. Okay, so GPS also uses non geostationary satellites and of course weather forecast. Okay, we need to, if you, let's say you want to know what the weather is like uh, in Pakistan, lah, for example. Okay, you will definitely have to talk to a satellite in Pakistan. Lah, kan? You can't be talking to a satellite in Malaysia, like, hey, satellite in Malaysia, can you tell us what the weather is like in Pakistan? And satellite in Malaysia is like, you crazy, ah? I only know, I only start in Malaysia. So I need to be able to talk to another satellite in Pakistan. Okay, so there's a few, okay, and all these three are Malaysian satellites, the ISS, not the ISIS. Okay, ISS, the International Space Station, is also a non-geostationary satellite. It's going, I think it's moving faster than the Earth's rotation. Eh, faster or slower? Macam faster. Okay, Tiongsat is also the same, Razaksat is also the same, Pipit is also the same. All these are, are local uh, Malaysian uh, satellites. Okay, and uh, if you've ever watched the video before, you would actually know uh, that our Earth uh, is surrounded by a lot of satellites. Okay, it's um, and it, it's a little bit dangerous now uh, because we keep send men, humans, uh, we keep sending satellites into space. Okay, but after the satellite is done with its job, uh, it doesn't come back down, you know, it just stays stuck in space. Uh, and it becomes like this, and space now becomes like this huge. Uh, apa, tempat pembuangan satellite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there, uh, there was a, I read a recent article that says there's a ring of satellites around Earth. Okay, it's, it's like a really ring, like, you know, like, like uh, what is the planet? Uh, Saturn. Uh. And Saturn has a ring around it, right? Uh, 
the planet Saturn has a ring around it, and actually the ring, uh, is just you know, it's just rocks. It's just a lot of rocks, okay, that is rotating around Saturn because of its gravitational pull. So it's orbiting, okay, and it and there's nothing to push the rocks out now because there's nobody pushing it unless like what Ethan suggested, maybe a meteor comes up. But there's so many rocks over there, okay, that you know it's very hard for the ring to go away. Like you need like is ultra huge meteor uh, which is like maybe the size of the sun uh, okay in order for in order for the the rocks to go away okay and on earth uh, actually on earth we are facing the same problem you know? we are sending satellites up and up and up and up but we're not bringing the satellites down <laughs> okay so uh so it's it will it's not yet uh, but it will become a problem one day for us maybe a few million years into the future lah. okay but it will become a problem one day uh, for all of us okay when there's so many satellites huh then what is going to happen to all this it's just floating around the earth uh, with no reason you know okay, and, and <laughs> it's just going to cause a lot of traffic jam lah. orang mau pergi ke bulan pun ada masalah sebab is this is this satellite uh, orbit uh, that is moving around us gosh jojo popular lima sudah okay uh <laughs> I only just wanted to okay the first few questions in this are pretty standard lah. okay so state Newton's universal law okay I would actually encourage you to memorize this okay memorize the few laws lah, okay universal law is one of them Kepler's three laws okay uh, all these definitions they're not very many definitions in chapter three there are a lot of formulas I would suggest that if you want to memorize something for chapter three, memorize these four things. Okay? The universal law of gravitation and Kepler's three laws. And while we're on the subject uh, for heat, uh, okay, I would also suggest that you memorize the gas law definitions. Definition, uh, okay, what is the definition of Boyle's law? What is the definition of Charles Law? What is the definition of Gay Lussac's law? Okay, so memorize the laws, very few of me. Three in chapter four and four in chapter three. Uh, chapter two is uh, Newton's three laws of motion. Lah. Okay, Newton's three laws of motion: inertia, force, mass, acceleration, and the third one is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so yeah, it'll be good to you know list down all the ten laws: three in chapter two, four in chapter three, and three in chapter four. Okay. list down all the 10 laws and you know, memorize it. Okay, uh, state what is represented by this. Okay, this one you can find out on your own. Uh, this one is also the same, right? The two relationships which involve gravitational pull. So this is F and M is uh, directly proportional. And the other one is F and R is inversely proportional. So it is two, the two relationships uh, that come from Newton's universal law of gravitation. This one, this is the formula. Okay, so the two relationships come from there. Okay, summarize both. This one, no need. Uh, okay, so this is what I meant. Huh? Okay, right. You know, go and open your book, write down now what is Kepler's first law, what is Kepler's second law, Kepler's third law. Okay, commit it into memory. Um, what I did with my Form 4 students last year was, <laughs> was that I forced them to memorize. And then every time before class, uh, I will test one of the laws. Uh, okay, today write down Kepler's third law. Everybody write down. Okay, and then uh, whoever got it wrong will have to. What was their punishment? Uh? I can't remember. Yeah, like, I punished them now. I can't remember. I think I think it involved money lah, but I can't remember. Okay, this is the question I wanted to answer. Okay, today with what little time that we have. Okay, so state the meaning of escape velocity. So escape velocity is the minimum velocity for an object orbiting uh, uh, to escape its orbit. Okay, the, the key word, okay, the key word is escaping the orbit. Okay, that is the key word. The velocity needed, okay, for an object to escape its orbit. Oh yes, okay, the minimum velocity required by an object to overcome the gravitational force, okay, or to escape the gravitational pull of the Earth. Okay, now let's calculate. Uh, okay, let's calculate the escape velocity. Escape velocity is square root of 2 gm over r squared. 
Oh no, over R, not squared. There's no squared, there's no squared. Okay, 2GM over R. Okay, G is not given over here. So, okay. So, from the surface of Mars. So, we're talking about this one. Okay, the mass of the Mars is here. The, well, the radius of Mars is here. So, you will have V equals to 2. G is 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Okay, but again, like I said just now, don't worry about this value of G, eh? always given. In the exam, next week, next, next week, lah. in the exam, eh, if the G is not given, eh, make sure you ask for it. It should be given to you. Okay, it should be given because it's a constant. Okay, the mass is 6.42 times 10 to the power 23. Okay, over, and the R is 3.4 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, it's a very simple uh, formula to use. Okay, V equals to 2 GM over R, and then you can calculate this one. Lah. Okay, then the second one is, of course, the surface of the moon. This time, instead of using Mars, we use the moon to near this one. This is the mass of the moon. Okay, and this is uh, the... The radius of the moon. Okay, so uh, we're, again, uh, guys, when we're talking about escape velocity, we're talking about the velocity needed now uh, for something that is going around the moon or around Mars to escape. Okay, so you can calculate this on your own and do the same thing now. Uh, likewise, 2G. Okay, our M is 7.35 times 10 to 22. Okay, over R is 1.74 times 10 to the power of 6. Square root the whole thing. Don't forget the square root. Okay, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Don't forget the square root. Okay, just give me one minute. Uh. Okay, and then you will be able to get the answer for this. Uh. Okay, now the escape velocity depends on two depends on a few things and it doesn't depend on other things as well okay it depends on the uh, the first thing that it depends on is on the mass of the planet okay, mass of planet or okay uh, it also depends on uh, the distance okay, distance from center of planet what it does not depend on is the mass of the object or mass of the orbiting object. Okay, so the escape velocity uh, really doesn't depend uh, on the satellite. You know. If the satellite is heavy or the satellite is light, uh, okay, okay, again, uh, let's use the two extreme examples, me and Joey. Uh. If me and Joey, uh, we are both going to orbit around the moon, right? Okay our escape velocity uh, is going to be exactly the same. Did I say orbit around the moon? Yeah, okay, orbit around the moon. Uh. Our escape velocity uh, is going to be exactly the same. Although our mass is different. A lot of people uh, would think that, oh, okay, since Joey is lighter, uh, her escape velocity will be, you know, it's easier for her to escape uh, because she's lighter. Okay, Or maybe, oh, Sir Marcus is so heavy, uh, very difficult for him to escape like, because he's so berat. You know? Guys, we cannot think that way. Yeah? Okay, everything that we know about physics, uh, okay, as when we talk about it on Earth, uh, has to do with other, you know, the gravitational acceleration is 9.81. But in space, uh, it is a totally different ball game, you know. Okay, in outer space, the gravitational pull is not 9.81. At a certain height, the gravitational acceleration is less. Okay. okay? And so, because of that, we cannot we cannot apply the same principles that we have on Earth, okay, into, uh, into space. When you go into Form Five, uh, you will hit this chapter, the final chapter in Form Five, lah, which is called quantum physics, lah. Okay, quantum physics deals with physics, uh, at a very small level, you know? Okay, we always think, uh, that the smallest thing on Earth, uh, is the atom, and. That's what we thought. Lah. <laughs> okay, we thought that the smallest thing on Earth is actually the atom. And then when you go into chemistry and you learn that, yo, gosh, there are things that are smaller than the atom, which is the protons, <laughs> the neutrons, okay, and the electrons. 
Okay, so there are things that make up the atom, you know. Well, guys, when you go into quantum physics now, you will find that there are things that make up the protons and there are things that make up the neutrons. Okay, there are other things inside the protons. Huh? So we are going at an even smaller level. And at those levels, huh, at the levels that are even smaller, everything that we learn in physics huh, about you know what we see, this is, cannot be applied, cannot be applied at that level. Okay, so okay, sorry, I'm totally fangirling physics. <laughs> okay. It's interesting because you know what we use on Earth okay, cannot really be applied to outer space, okay, and also cannot be applied now to small, small objects, like you know, molecular level objects. Wow. Okay. Which is why physics is very beautiful. <laughs> okay, according to me. Lah. Okay. Uh let me answer this last question now. Okay, so I'm on Babel, I'm on base. Okay, so diagram five shows the orbital states in outer space. Okay, look at these three orbits. Uh. So this is the Earth, this is an asteroid, okay, and this is planet S. Okay, given the orbital radius for Earth is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11. That means this distance over here is this, uh, 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11. This is R, and the orbital period is one year. Okay, and so you kind of know that if it is R and T, uh, this is probably about Kepler's third law. Okay, let's recap. Uh. Kepler's third law is T1 squared over T2 squared equals to R1 cubed over R2 cubed. Okay, and so if the orbital period for planet S is this one uh, is 686 days, oh no, so bad. Find the orbital radius for planet S. Okay. We come back to this, huh? T1 squared over T2 squared equals to R1 cubed over R2 cubed. Okay, let us set this one, huh? let's set this as R1 and T1. Okay, orbital radius for Earth is R1, orbital period for Earth is one year, but this one it says year, this one it says days. So we need to change it into days. Okay, so the T1 squared will be 365 days. We assume that one year is 365 days now. Okay, so it's 365 squared over 686 squared equals to R1 is 1.5 times 10 to the power 11. 10 to the power 11 cubed over R2 cubed, which is what we want to find. Okay, what is the distance between the sun and planet S? Okay, that is the orbital radius. Okay, and if you calculate it correctly, sorry, I'm running out of time. Huh? Um, according to this, sorry, according to the answer here, like, it's 2.28 times 10 to the power of 11. Okay, so R2 will be 2.28 times 10 to the power of 11 meters. Okay, don't forget to cube root, huh, everybody. Don't forget to cube root. Okay, because you're finding R2 cube. So in order to find R2, you need to cube root it. Huh? Now, when we talk about the asteroid, define the orbital period again. Okay, now it has its orbital radius 1.9 times 10 to the power of 11. So we use this same two again. Sorry. Okay, so 365 squared over T2 squared equals to 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 cubed over 1.9 times 10 to the power of 11 cubed. Okay, now it's, it wants you to find the orbital period for the asteroid. So I, let, I put the asteroid as the second one, T2 squared. Okay, and uh, when you calculate, calculate, you will be able, you should be able to get T2 equals to, uh, hold on. Uh, about, okay, about 522 days. Okay, you should be able to get about 522 days. Okay, because we're using days, huh? okay, you can use years also if you want, but uh, let's use days. Lah. Okay, I like to use days. So T2 is 522 days, which makes sense to us. And if the Earth is 365 days, obviously the asteroid is going to be a lot longer. Okay, how many? 686 days. Okay, 
oh sorry the s s is 666 686 days and so the asteroid will be in between in between 365 and 686 days so when you calculate it you get about 522 days which makes uh, quite a bit of sense okay